uh, today. Yeah. So today's lecture is going to be on uh, regenerative species. It will be conducted by myself, uh, Navija Gamlath and Malik Patiratna. We're all seniors of the WIPS uh, of Royal College. So yeah, we'll start off. Yeah, so I'll start off with an introduction. So what do you all know anything about uh, regenerating species or what it means? Anyone? Okay, so it seems like you all don't. I'll tell you what it means. So regenerating species, in, like the name itself is the definition. Regenerating species are species that have the ability to regenerate. So even humans to some extent are regenerating species because imagine you getting a wound, all right? If you get a wound, the skin grows back, right? When the wound heals, the skin grows back. That is regeneration. But uh, us, we can regenerate to a very small extent, but there are some animals that could regenerate even their heart, even the whole body. If you take like, uh, uh, animals like star, uh, starfish, they could literally regenerate the whole body. So, I guess some yeah. animals, when you cut them, they still live. Yeah, I don't know if you have seen geckos. If you cut the tail, it could still grow back the tail, even the legs and all, but I'm sure you all have seen geckos. Yeah, so some Malis are uh, sending some examples. Yeah, they're all right, Mali. These are all examples of regenerating species. So... Uh, regeneration is a natural process that allows plants and animals to replace, restore, damage or missing cells, tissues, organs and even entire body parts to full function. So basically the same thing I said. Regeneration is an act or process of coming back, growing anew or spiritual, a spiritual rebirth. When a lizard loses its tail, then it grows it back. This is an example of regeneration. So, Mali, I have a small video clip that will summarize the whole thing. Yeah, if you could move on to the video, you all will get a better understanding. Starfish can regenerate arms, certain lizards can grow back severed tails, some flatworms can recreate their entire body from a single adult cell, and my skin will grow back together after a paper cut. On some level, we can all do a little regeneration. But if I cut my arm off, I'm not gonna expect to grow a new one, right? The, the wound would eventually be covered over with a rugged fibrous matrix of the protein collagen, forming what we know as scar tissue with a layer of skin on top. But I'm not gonna grow a new appendage. But that is not true for everyone. The real superstars of limb regeneration are the members of the Order Claudata, salamanders. Cut off a salamander's leg? Don't actually cut off a salamander's leg, you know what I mean. And cells at the wound site won't form scar tissue. Instead, they'll transform into what researchers call a wound epidermis, which activates a wave of chemical instructions to the cells below. Soon, the nerves in the stump begin to grow again, and mature muscle and tissue cells actually revert back to their immature state, sort of going back in time before they were specialized cells. They then start streaming toward the wound, forming a mass called a blastoma. These undifferentiated cells are a lot like stem cells, or what embryonic cells are like during development before a gene is activated that tells them what they're going to be, like a liver or a heart or a skin cell. But these undifferentiated cells were mature, and they have a terrific memory of what they used to be, like a muscle cell in a forelimb or a cartilage cell in a leg joint. This is how they take up their specific positions and form new muscle, connective tissue, cartilage, and bone until, boom, the animal has a whole shiny new leg. We understand the basic method here, but researchers are still puzzled by the details. Like, why does the wound epidermis form in the first place, and how does it trigger that reversion to the cells below it? And just how do all those regenerating cells know where they should be, and what shape to take on? The truth is, we just don't know. Yet. But researchers have recently pinpointed a cell that seems to be responsible for salamanders' remarkable regeneration capabilities. All animals have a kind of repair cells called macrophages. They rush into a wound site and eat up dead cells and pathogens while triggering the release of other immune cells. Mammals also use them to repair muscle, which got Dr. James Godwin of the Australian Regenerative Medicine Institute to thinking. When Godwin and his colleagues reduced the number of macrophages at a salamander wound site, they found that regeneration took much longer. And when they removed all the macrophages, 
macrophages, the poor guys could no longer regrow limbs, but rather ended up with a lot of scar tissue, just like we do. This suggests that regeneration is possible because those macrophage cells release some vital chemical signal that might trigger the undifferentiated cells to come in and do their thing. So does that mean that we'll soon know how to help humans regenerate lost limbs? Don't hold your breath. Researchers say we're still a long way off from understanding the complexity of regeneration. Plus, considering that it takes some small salamanders over a year to regenerate a limb, and larger ones over a decade, even if a human could grow back a lost leg, it could take them over 20 years. Still, there are more immediate benefits and attainable goals that might come from this research, like how to make wounds heal faster and with little, if any, scarring. Not a new arm, but still pretty awesome. Thanks for joining me for this SciShow Dose, and thanks to our latest president of space, Math Help Boards, where you can get free math help at any level at any time of the day. If you'd like to earn the moniker president of space while supporting the work that we do here, just go to subbable.com slash SciShow. Yes, Amali, I think you all got an idea of what uh, regenerating species or animals mean. I think that video summarized it. So next, uh, yeah, next slide. Yeah, we'll move on to causes of regeneration. So basically, the cause of regeneration could be a lot of things. Like uh, you could, uh, for an example, getting attacked by a predator or even natural reasons like old age or ejecting due to overuse age, they're all reasons. I'm sure all of y'all can think of some reasons why like, uh, why this happens. So planarian regeneration involves changes in pre-existing tissue and formation of an outgrowth at wounds called a blastoma, in which missing tissues are produced because of small fragments of tissue can be regenerate, regenerated uh, into new animals. All of the various organ systems and cell types of the body can be produced in the adult. So this basically summarizes what I just said. They could regenerate the whole body if they want to. If they, it's some animals, if they get attacked, they could regenerate the whole body. So uh, age is also another reason. Mali. I think uh, one Mali sent uh, an answer. Yeah, age is also another reason. Mali. So uh, if you all can think of any examples, uh, please go ahead, Mali. We'll give you some time. You can think of any examples. I uh, when parasitic infections come to the animal, they self amputate. Yes, perfect. Mark. That's, that's a very, yeah, yeah, that's a very deep answer and it's a perfect example. Mark. Yeah. Anyone else uh, have any uh, examples on? Okay, Mali. Uh, I also have another video, Mali. This will also summarize this part. Uh, of the topic. So yeah, if we could move on to the video, I think I would get a better idea. From unexpected mammals and sharks to crustaceans and amazing amphibians, here are 17 of the strangest regenerating animals. More than 900 are there round. I had screenings. Pointed yeah. appearance. Those spines inspired the creature's common name. Urchin was an old nickname for hedgehogs, which they resemble. Their sharp spines provide an effective defense against predators. It is for the animal to regenerate them. Did you know the sea urchin's spine is composed entirely of a single crystal? Number 16, sharks. We were kind of surprised to find these big fish are good at regeneration, but then again, considering what they regenerate, maybe it's not that big of a surprise. Certain species can replace all their teeth within two weeks. Experts say the rapid replacement is due to shark teeth being unattached to the bone. Did you know the average shark is estimated to lose up to 40,000 teeth in its lifetime? And sharks can regenerate more than just their choppers too. Bamboo sharks can regrow most of their liver within 24 hours. Skin and scales can also be regenerated by certain species over a period of several months. Number 15, skinks. These animals belong to one of the most diverse families of lizards with more than 1,500 species so far described. The majority of them have long tapering tails that can be detached if a predator grabs onto it. A new tail will regenerate within four months, but it won't be as good as the original. Still, that's better than those species with stumpy tails. Those lizards exhibit no regenerative abilities at all. 
Geckos are another lizard that displays similar behaviours and abilities. Number 14. Lobsters. They might be better known for being served on a plate, but these crustaceans also have a reputation for regeneration. Experts say the animals can regrow their claws, legs and antennae. They're even known to amputate their limbs to escape from predators. The regrowth happens during the molting process when the lobster sheds its exoskeleton. In one documented case, a lobster regenerated four missing legs and both claws within a single process. Number 13. Humans. There's no doubt that we humans can be some strange animals, but are we strange enough to be mentioned on this list? Overall, I have the video stopped now. Yeah, Mali, give it a minute. It'll load back. The first such incident was documented in the 1930s when the skin and bone of a man's finger were regrown. Toes damaged by burns or gangrene can also regrow. It might be a while before we can... <laughs> Deadpool, but it's a start. Number 12, Queen Conch. These are large sea snails that can have a shell measuring almost 14 inches long, 35 centimeters. Along with their solid spiky shells, the mollusks are known for its long snout and well-developed eyes that are set upon two stalks. Experts say the critter's eye stalks can be subject to amputation, but if the snail loses its peepers, they will completely regenerate. Number 11, Deer. Species found within this family of hoofed animals include the elk, reindeer, and moose. Like we mentioned, there aren't many mammals that qualify for this sort of list. But these well-known beasts do, and it has to do with their antlers. They shed them every year, but a new pair is later regenerated. Did you know their antlers are the only appendages that can be annually regrown by a mammal? Across nearly all species, only males have antlers except for the male Chinese water deer. The only females with antlers are reindeer or caribou. Number 10. Starfish. You might also know them as sea stars. Whatever you call them, there are more than 1,500 species found on seabeds in all the world's oceans. They show up in tropical waters to freezing polar waters and have been found at 20,000 feet, 6 kilometers below the surface. Most of them can regrow their limbs, but certain species can regenerate their entire body from a single arm that's less than one inch long. Experts say that it can take anywhere from a few months to a few years to complete the process. Number 9. Spiny Mouse Our third mammal with regenerative powers is this humble beast. The little critters have a method of escaping predators that is unique among mammals. When in the clutches of an aggressor, they will release chunks of their skin to get away but that missing skin is later regenerated along with their fur, cartilage and sweat glands. Only minimal scarring can be detected after the skin is regrown. There's a theory that humans might possess similar genes that could allow for regeneration. Number 8. Sea Cucumbers For the record, their common name is inspired by the resemblance to the cucumber fruit. And while you might like the taste of the fruit, you wouldn't like the taste of a sea cucumber. They're packed with toxins, and that's a big reason why predators usually avoid them. But if the creature is threatened, it has a couple of unappetizing ways to defend itself. Some species will break off their limbs for protection. Later, those lost appendages will regenerate. Some animals have a more extreme response to a threat. They'll self-liquefy their internal organs, then jettison them through their backside. The predator is entangled in the detritus long enough for the cucumber to escape. Within a few weeks, the animal's guts will regrow. Number 7. Basket Star they appear like a mass of seaweed, and some people have even thought they were alien life forms. But they are marine invertebrates that create unusual abstract patterns with their tendrils. Did you know these marine creatures can regenerate themselves by splitting their bodies apart? It's a form of asexual reproduction where each half will develop into a new and separate organism. Number 6. Hail Hydrozoan 
These minute freshwater organisms measure about 15 millimetres and are related to jellyfish. Noted for their remarkable regenerative ability, the hydra has a protein that seems to counter the effects of ageing at the cellular level. Scientists still unclear on how it all works. What is known is that the hydra can regenerate significant portions of its body after an accident. The ability inspired a reference to the mythological hydra, which can regrow its decapitated heads. It's unknown how long the creatures can live. Some experts say that barring disease, the hydra could live for 10,000 years, if not indefinitely. Number 5. Flanarian Flatworms These creatures are often cited as textbook examples of animals that can regenerate lost body parts. If the worm is split apart horizontally or vertically, it will regenerate as two separate animals. Experts have shown that the newly regenerated individuals could even possess the same long-term memories of the original specimen. If so, scientists say that it could prove that the creature's memory is transferred through a chemical process. Number 4. Salamanders These amphibians are sometimes mistaken for lizards, and the resemblance can extend to their respective abilities to regenerate. Unlike those reptiles, salamanders can regenerate more than their tails. They can regrow lost limbs within a few weeks, along with other body parts that have been damaged. More complex tissues like the eye retina are also commonly regenerated, and according to experts, salamanders can do this indefinitely. Not unlike some other animals on the list, scientists are trying to reverse engineer the salamander's regenerative abilities for applications in human medicine. Number 3. Newts Remember how we said that salamanders are mistaken for lizards? Sometimes newts are mistaken for salamanders, of which they comprise a subfamily of about 100 species. Like their cousins, newts can regenerate limbs, spinal cords, hearts, intestines, eyes, and their upper and lower jaws. No surprise that amphibians like newts exhibit the highest regenerative capabilities of any four-footed vertebrates. Number 2. Snail Fur did you know that snails have fur? They really don't. Snail fur is the common name of a tiny marine animal that grows on the shells of hermit crabs, giving them a furry appearance. It's a species of hydroid that's no bigger than a human eyelash that has a trunk and a head used for catching food. Sometimes their heads are used for food by grazing fish. But whenever this little beast is decapitated, no worries. Their noggins will regenerate within a week, complete with a full head of hair. That's caught the attention of scientists who are trying to unravel the mystery of this primitive creature's regenerative abilities. Once that's figured out, the answer might hold the key to regenerating tissue in humans. Number 1. A lot of axolotl We've mentioned how amphibians like salamanders are renowned for their ability to regenerate. But some experts say the real master of the craft is the axolotl. In addition to regrowing limbs, they can also replace more complex organs including lungs, eyes, hearts and even spinal cords. Did you know that they can easily accept transplants like eyes and brains from other axolotls? The alien organs are always restored to full functionality. And for the full functionality of our YouTube channel, Yeah, I think that was a very interesting video, Ali. Uh, we could move on to the next slide. Yeah, so uh, types of regeneration. This is the next topic, Ali. So there's mainly two types of regeneration. One is reparative and one is restorative. These are just fancy words for uh, repair and restore. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, uh, repair means just uh, if you're bringing a faulty or damaged uh, part into good condition is what repair means. Restoring means completely bringing the part back into a function. Like if it's gone, if, if a leg is cut off, they can restore the leg. They can't repair the leg. They restore the leg. So that's the that's what the two uh, words mean. They're just fancy words. This That is the, the definition of it. Uh, so... Uh, the type of regeneration they use it depends on various factors, uh, mainly the cell activity and uh, their behavior. These are like the main two ways. So uh, yeah, I don't know if you caught that in the in that uh, last video, Mali. They said uh, Deadpool's superpower is regeneration. 
So his re, uh, his uh, superpower is uh, like restoration. So he can restore any body part. That is uh, his uh, superpower. That's just a fun fact, Mali. Yeah. So organisms regenerate in different ways. Plants and some sea creatures, such as jellyfish, can replace missing parts by extensively remodeling their remaining tissue. Some animals, such as lobsters, catfish, and lizards, replace missing parts by first growing a, spe a specialized bud of cells called blastema. So this is how they do it, Mati. Yeah, uh, this is just a summary Aya, of does how... Does it hurt for regeneration for those animals when they regenerate? When the parts are removed? Yeah, Mali, that's a very interesting question, actually. Uh, how, what do you feel when you get a wound and when it heals, when the skin grows back? How, what, what do you feel? It's the same thing. I think that's the same thing that applies to animals, just in a large scale way, depending on the situation, right? So if you get a wound, if you get a big wound... But yeah, feels, when their limbs are separated for one or two days, isn't it very hard to live? I, 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 I think so. Yeah, I, yeah, definitely must be very hard. I, I personally have not experienced this, so I can't put it into my own words. But I think you're right, Mali. I think it hurts very much. Yeah, yeah, it depends uh, on the species, actually. Yeah, uh, uh, if you like, know about this, Mali, and like, yeah, you're yeah, most welcome to shows, share with us. Like geckos, when they like drop off the tail, it doesn't hurt because they have a separate like a spine to remove the tail and drop it off, so it doesn't hurt for them. But then, like for something like like an axolotl or something, when the limb is removed. Uh, then pain is there because like they don't remove the limb automatically but with geckos there's a separate spine like with geckos and whips snakes and skinks and stuff there's a separate spine so then because of that it's meant to be removed even without like something else pulling it so they can remove it if they want when they're like getting chased so then it doesn't really hurt and then for insects like praying mantids and stuff they also self amputate but for them it only hurts around the abdomen. So if they remove their limbs, it doesn't really hurt. Yeah, Mali, uh, thank you very much. I think the other Mali got the answer for the for the his for his question. Yeah, thank yeah. you very much for that, Mali. Yeah, uh, if we could move on to the next one, next slide, Mali. So yeah, I think uh, Mali Padira and I will take it on from here. Oh no, we have one more. So uh, this is this is a diagram of uh, vertebrates and invertebrates and how they uh, how they regenerate money. So if you take humans, adult humans can regenerate skin that uh, regenerate and skin and liver cells though. So it limits us to that part. But if you take frogs, tadpoles can regenerate limbs but lose the ability in adulthood. So these, all these examples, Mali, uh, are the kind of examples you would see in the regenerative animals. So the flatworm is actually very interesting, Mali, because uh, uh, it could regenerate any part of their body, including their brain. So this is a uh, brain is one of the most um, most sensitive parts of your body, and yet it could regenerate even the body, even the starfish. So yeah, yeah. that's actually quite interesting. Yeah, Mali. Excuse me. Normally, flatworms like uh, when they like get like. Uh, an infection in their body they just remove they just basically removed off their whole body and then it's just their head and then they grow back a new body from at least one week yeah mali uh thank you very much for that mali so uh we'll move on to the next slide yeah so this is also another diagram of how they uh, restore and regenerate parts of their body. Yeah, yeah, you all can have a close look. Yeah, so I'll give it to Malita. Yeah, to the next part. Yeah. Thank you, Sang. Could you uh, go to the manual slide, please?
Thank you. So, Mali, we were just talking about decision that lakes fish in mammals. Uh, Mali, mammals are animals that nourish their young with milk belonging to this class. They live in terrestrial and marine ecosystems. Mali, examples for some mammals are dolphins, monkeys, humans, and bats. Mali, special features of mammals are they have a four chambered heart, which does complete double blood circulation. Uh, they possess ear lobes and their skin is covered by hair. Go to the next slide, please. Thank you. So, mammalian regeneration in mammals, mammals mainly regenerating responses are quite limited or they are quite rare. And uh, mammals who regenerate produces a specialized bud at the site of amputation. This bud, this uh, specialized bud is called a uh, blastema, which is a, bit is, is a bit identical to the amphibian blastema. And the deer of antlers, the antlers deer. Sorry, the deer's antlers, liver of mammals, and skin can be regenerated by mammals. Mali, we'll be talking about regeneration takes place in, in the African spiny mouse and humans. First up, we'll be talking about the regeneration that's taking place in the African spiny mouse. The scientific name of the African spiny mouse is Acomis wilsoni, and these species are found in Ethiopia. Kenya, Somalia, and also South Sudan, Tanzania, and countries such as Uganda. And their habitats are dry savanna and subtropical shrublands, dry shrublands, and rocky areas. Mali, the adult is about 8 centimeters long. They are omnivorous creatures, and this animal has the ability to regenerate several tissues and skin. And they regenerate, like the skin regenerates after removal or burn, burn injury. And my the main reason for this animal to regenerate is they have a blunted immunity system. So their immunity system shows a blunted inflammatory response to injury compared to that of the other typical mammal. And up to date, Mali, the spine mice are the only mammals that can completely regenerate the automatically released or otherwise damaged skin tissue. And the African spine mice also heals quickly, so they use the same mechanism for this. My next up, we'll be talking about humans. And we can regenerate our liver. And Compensated regeneration takes place. No blastema is produced during mammalian regeneration. But mainly it, it is done by proliferation of tissues of the liver remaining on the remaining lobes of the liver. And mainly the special feature that you should understand that this gets activated only under severe hepatic damage, like damage to the liver, not damage that caused by caused by alcohol or smoking or any diseases relating to the liver. So, and uh, the human liver regenerates in three to 10 days and human skin also does regeneration and it's done in 27 days. And next up we'll be talking about the amphibians. Mali, what is an essence is essential to complete the lifestyle? And they were the first organism to invade land during evolution. So some examples for amphibians are toad, frog, and salamanders. Mildly special features of amphibians are their respiration is done by many organs in the body, such as the mouth, the buccal cavity, and their skin. And they possess a three-chambered heart. And they possess a pentadactyl rings for locomotion. My talking of amphibian regeneration, all amphibians exhibit regenerative capacities. Uh, some factors affecting amphibians are temperature. So when the temperature rises, the ability of an amphibian to regenerate also rises. And with the deceleration of food, they are the size of the regenerating organ also decreases. And they need to have good nerve supply and oxygen supply. One of the main hormones that the amphibians need for regeneration are insulin and endorphin. And while it because of X-rays, the 
and the regeneration like is prevented normally if the presence of an electric field increases the regeneration of an antigen normally amphibians that generate some of the amphibians that generate regenerate are salamander snakes and axolotls and we will be talking about salamander in the next slide Normally, the salamander's scientific name is Caudata, and they have a lifespan about 20 years, really in or near water, moist ground, and under rocks. And they are up to six inches long. They eat everything from bone to muscle to blood vessels. Normally, in the first video, I think you had a few ideas about the accident with it. So, normally, this is what basically happens. Normally, when they lose a limb, the wound drops over. As soon as the wound is seen by a big blood clot, it develops a clump of cells in the surface called the blasting. Then a small miniature version of the limb forms, which grows until the correct size to the correct size of the end. Normally, the fastest amphibian that can reduce the limbs is the actual. Normally, I will be handing I will hand you yeah, uh, can I put it to the reptile slide? Yeah, I think it's the twelfth side. Yeah, Uh, Somali, some of you all may know, but uh, the animal kingdom is divided into two groups, so invertebrates and vertebrates. Uh, invertebrates are the animals that, that don't have a spine, and vertebrates are the animals that have a spine. So I will be talking about the reptiles, birds, and the invertebrate species is the kind of them. So moving on to reptiles. Uh, reptiles are the animals that will crawl to move from one space to another. So they are well adapted to life on land. They live in terrestrials, freshwater, and marine ecosystems. Uh, do you all know any reptiles? Can someone tell? Okay. Yes. And reticulated pythons, iguanas. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Alligators. Uh, yeah, true man. So uh, these reptiles have a dry skin and their respiration is lung by lungs. And also they possess internal fertilization. Their heart is three chambered only. Uh, then, uh, so the regeneration in reptiles differs among various species, such as lizards, crocodiles, snakes. So the reptiles have a long tail, right? Like it's really long. So their tail. The most of the animals can regenerate their tail. So these are crocodiles. But the snake cannot regenerate their tail. Oh, yeah. Uh, Deep snakes yeah. can. Some snakes can, but yeah. uh, there are some they... species, not all of them. Yeah. But each time they regenerate, it's like a lot shorter. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we are talking about lizard regeneration. They are the most notable and the well studied, and uh, they possess the highest regenerative capacity as a group. And in crocodiles, not only the, not only they can regenerate their tail, but also they can regenerate the maxillary. So, can put the next slide, please. Yeah. Uh, so this is a dwarf yellow-headed gecko. Uh, it's a very small species can grow up to 
80 millimeters. Sorry, its average length is 80 millimeters, but it can it can grow up to 90 millimeters. And they have a regenerative tail. This small species can be found in rocky areas of southern Kenya, Somalia, eastern Tanzania, and Zanzibar. Also, Mali, this species is also known as yellow-headed dwarf gecko, which is a variety of dwarf geckos, if you all know. Mm. Yeah. So, if you are talking about birds, birds are the animals that have adapted for flying. So, they can fly even a small amount, like, let's say over a fence or a tree. Etc. Uh, can some of you name some birds that you know? Birds. Eagles. Yeah. Falcon. Yeah. Emu. Kiwi. Yeah. Kiwi. Yeah. Parrot. Macaws. Macaws. Penguins. So Mali, you can see a, a jungle fowl and next to it is an ostrich. Even though the ostrich can't fly, a fly a big amount, but it is a bird and it is the largest bird. So the features of birds are they possess a light body, light bony in the skeleton, and a streamlined body for flying. Also, their skin is covered by feathers. They don't have teeth, but a beak is adapted for different modes of nutrition. Their heart is four chamber, right? And they have eyes with eyelids, and they have a sharp eyesight. Uh, an interesting fact is that their body temperature does not change according to the environmental temperature. So most of the species in vertebrates can adapt to the change in environmental temperature, but the birds and the mammals can't. So, yeah, uh, can we move into the regeneration part? Uh, the birds are believed to have very limited regenerative abilities as well as, but they are capable of regenerating part, some part of parts of the leaves depending on some conditions such as the age of the animal, the interaction, inter, interrelationship of the injured tissue with other muscles and the type of operation. Somali, this, some studies on roosters have suggested that birds are also capable of regenerating the hair cells and their feathers in order to repair their damaged feathers. Somali, even though they have very limited regenerative ability, because they have very limited regenerative abilities. Most of the study on regeneration in birds are done on roosters. So we will be talking about roosters next. Yeah, so a rooster is a subspecies of red jungle fowl, which is a domesticated fowl. They are from the Southeastern Asia. So, some of you know it is the chicken, yeah. So, rooster, oh, rooster is a term for an adult male bird, and the younger male is called a cockerel, and an adult female is called a hen. These animal, these species is these species are omnivores, so they they eat insects, animals, insect, even animals as large as lizards, small snakes, or young mice. They often scratch the foil to search for seeds. Yeah. The average lifespan of a rooster is for five to 10 years. So as I said before, birds are the animals that have adapted for flying. So the roosters are capable of flying over short distance, such as an, over a fence or into trees. Yeah. So Somalia. Echinoderms are this are a, echinoderms are an invertebrate. 
so they have an like really high ability to reason the data. Even starfish is a a kind of dumb. So the starfish can reason at limbs as shown in the video. Yeah. Yeah, I do have a question. Someone raised a hand. Yeah, I guess not. Uh, this echinoderm, it is a film that shows evolutionary relationship to film codara. So an example for echinoderms are the starfish, the star sea urchin, sea cucumber, sea lily. So this purple color creature is a sea urchin and next to it is a sea cucumber. These species are all marine and they possess a sharp, shiny body color. Their body can be star-shaped, cylindrical, or flower-like. So a sea urchin is a flower-like echinoderm, and the sea cucumber is a cylindrical echinoderm. The interesting fact about, fact about the echinoderms is they have no heart, a brain, or eyes, but they do have a mouth. So, and the nervous system that, like, they can move. So, uh, moving on to the regeneration part. The tissue regeneration in echinoderms is widespread, right? and it is well documented in starfish, sea urchin, and sea cucumber. Some echinoderms can regenerate internal organ, organs and parts of their central nervous system. Yeah, so Mali, uh, this is a starfish. Uh, its limbs are broken, as you can see, but they are slowly regenerating by cell by cell. By cell. Uh, starfish are known as a sea star and asteroids due to being in the class Astrodia. Uh, they are star-shaped echinoderms. They can be found in all world's oceans from tropics to frigate polar waters. These species are marine invertebrates. They have tube feet operated by hydraulic system and a mouth at the center of the water. Uh, so if you're talking about a starfish regeneration, uh, in response to injury, starfish can atomize damaged limbs. Uh, when a starfish goes into its regenerative state, they go through a four week process where the limbs will be regenerated. So it can go up to a month, even maybe a year, as given in the video. Uh, yeah, so that's about it.